pictures. So that's uh, that's good. Good on James. Props, uh, shout outs to him. And uh, we're into the pistol now. So we've got CLG, we've got Cloud9. They're going to be facing off on the third map, the decider here. And CLG on the T side, Cloud9 on the CT side. They've already got a lot of players towards B. And Cloud9. Oh wow, already a pick there by Sean Gares. And oh my god, <laughs> I can't even form a sentence. And Cloud9 have killed everyone. They're all dead. And they played the, like. Way more aggressive than usually CC just play the B site on the pistol rounds, but they did that really successfully, which actually is kind of surprising to me. But yeah, great job there from Cloud9. Yeah, it's going to have to be a pretty good uh, effort here in this round from COG with the force up to actually get something done. But they've actually left uh, Haste and uh, Genium64 with a bit of cash because, of course, the AWP are there. And oh, I, you've got to love it when you get the, the one shot with the, the scout because they don't have any armor, you get the torso uh, connection there, and that will be. Quick frag, and that's super cool because it's you run so fast with the scout too. You can just get in there, get out of there, and uh, before people would even see, yeah. Yeah, and he also tagged Cutler there, though. No, they actually have four people with vests. We're just gonna say that they just went for a semi successful buy from them. All right, so everyone's gonna get kind of destroyed there. And I. Why do people want to go for the Deagle over the Tech 9 armor? It just blows my mind. The Deagle's sometimes. cool. Yeah, Some that's people true. need to make frag highlights, okay? That's what the Deagle is for. It's for making frag highlights. Yeah, that's true. Not for winning games. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, hey, sometimes people would like to play the... Uh, what? Well, it is definitely lower percentage. You're looking for crazy shots. But if if a, if like let's say Cloudline make a mistake and they're peaking and they're giving you too many shots, then the kind of the the inconsistency kind of drops, and eventually maybe you'll get something. So I, it, this, there's always going to be an argument for everything, pros and cons. And uh, right now my screen is filling up with Cloud9, Cloud9 and Cloud9, all the frags for Cloud9, three to zero now. As CLG are going to be in with uh, What's their buy. Two flawless rounds in a row. Oh, we can uh, yeah, absolutely, no deaths on anybody. No. Yeah, they're pretty strong economy now for Cloud9. And it might be, it, it's quite interesting because we may actually see that Cloud9 have a really strong CT half, CT start on this map. And then you, then you would wonder, hang on, why did they not pick this over train? But never mind, I mean, the cool thing with Cloud9 is that they're still in an ex a huge experience gathering position where they need to get all the, the match experience underway with this new lineup still. Sean Gare is always close to the, the big boulder. And it's going to be Cutler to take him down there on the upper part area. And he gets a second kill as well. Cutler going really, really huge with that double. And that's such a strong response here. Cloud9 put a lot of resources early into the round for positive trades. They got the opposite. It's COG with the better trades. They have four versus three. At least rotations can be faster, but Skadoodle's going to stay in. That's so, so strong because they needed something to equalize the situation. So very nice to Skadoodle and just run back to the bomb site or something. And three to three now. Uh, it's going to put himself up on the ledge to the right there. Shroud can see them way before they can see them. And he's going to get the first frag. He actually looked towards short there. Because uh, his angle was so far back that he could have been wrapped on, but it's going to be CLG 2 on 2 again. Oh, the AWP comes into play. JDM64 finds the frag on the Freakazoid. Skadoodle. Star AWPer of Cloud9. Looking for a shot over the top of the smoke. And so far he finds not all that much. Good positions here by CLG. Skadoodle. Oh, that shot. Oh, so nearly he connects. He's going to go around the side. Goes for the no scope. And again, this time he'll connect, but JDM64. Has his teammates back. Hazed will go down, but he will win the round. Yeah, and once again, we see like excellent decision making by CLG. They get the uh, good trades in the like toilet area, and what you see a lot of teams is just push out towards the A site. And I talked about this earlier, where you can just immediately get killed, like four people, just in a matter of like two or three seconds. But they just fall back instead and just go for the B push after trading effectively. It's just so much better to do that. And uh, yeah, what well, we'll see, uh, COG gonna go, they're going to go for a uh, push up A long, the upper park area. Ooh, wow, Hayes finds a frag on Skadoodle, who's getting pretty aggressive towards, towards the uh, sewers area. And that's actually really important because that position would have given loads of info for Cloud9. 
Oh my god, that is disgusting. Tarek gonna shut down Sean Gares and COG look like they could be having a really sick defense here of this A bomb site now that they've taken it away from Cloud9. And Cloud9 likely don't even want to touch this bomb site now. Yeah, they should just save immediately. You sound you, you sound sad. I did? Yeah, you sound really sad. You wanted to see you wanna see the retake, didn't you? You wanna see them fighting to the bitter end, I can I can tell. <laughs> Sometimes the, the, the manly decision threat is to know when your your round is up. To cut your losses. Yeah, that's why I said they should <laughs> 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 Alright, three to three to two. And oh wow, nothing is gonna actually find a kill as he's being hunted down there. But yeah, three to two. Uh, we shall have a situation whereby Cloud9. Only one guy dying there from CLG, so they managed to build up like a little bit of a bank at least. And with the three save weapons, they're going to go for the the full buy here. So, what would you like to see Cloud9 go for in this round? They're clearly outgunned, for example. I, I would go for three people towards A in the beginning. Just try to gain some ground towards long or uh, in the toilets, because. Uh, it's not that likely that CLG would go for the fast B push. This in this situation. It's quite it's quite fun that we have an area called the toilets. It's hard to make that sound cool. It's like okay, He's go going in the toilets! <laughs> <laughs> what? Looking for why? the train in why? the toilets. Why would you yell it? Like Because maybe there's action there, man. You gotta gotta spice it up. The bank, it's lo a lot cooler. Yeah. He's the taking it straight to the bank. <laughs> that's that's how that's how you do it. Straight to the <laughs> bank. I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so nice boost here from Skidoodle. So looks like uh, Skidoodle's gonna be forced out of the toilets area here by COG, who slowly take more and more control of this area. And to be honest, they're kind of outside of the toilets. They're not actually inside the toilets. It's like a corridor where there is some doors where you can then enter the toilets. Which these players just do like not. in real life. Just like in real life, yes. We have a 3 to 2 score line. We've got a slow round. There's 25 seconds left here for COG to do something, but they're all spread out at the moment, looking for the play onto B now. They have to. They're committed. The bomb is towards that position. They're going to be charging through Monster. And no nades for the guy by the barrels. Now, that could cause problems indeed. He's going to get a first frag. Gets the trade, though, Tarek. Yeah, the as, bomb is uh, still down. Yeah, there's no time for this. There is no time. They've got to, they've got to back away. If they die after time, well, no one wants that. Wait, uh, okay, I was gonna say, I thought he's like hiding in the corner there in the dark, but it actually is x ray, so that looks really weird for a second. So, 4 to 2, and CLG with a pretty, pretty shaky situation there at the end. They left that way too late. Yeah, well, it, it didn't really make any sense because they had, they were just like standing outside of Monster in, in the hub area or sewers uh, and just waiting. Like, they didn't try to gain any ground, they just stood there and waiting for something, I don't know what. Oh, but they're actually taking your advice here, they're playing three players down A long. CLG gonna look for that entry, oh god, that gets taken down, he was the guy who was trading so well, but Sean Gares gets two, nothing gets a single frag onto JDM64, and now there's nothing left for CLG. So Finesse gonna swap out for the AK, now... Finesse gonna be making the call here, just, let's just go for that A play. The thing is, when they see that many players towards A long, it should be pretty free, the toilets, and that's exactly what they've taken. So, But how free is the bomb site right now? How free is the bomb site? It's very free, but they don't know that, so they're taking their time getting in. That's giving a window for Cloud9. Nothing around the smoke gets the, the shot there. I think he saw the foot of Hayes. He will slowly but surely get his way into a position now to just get this retake going, and it's going to be Freakazoid who will beat him to the angle for the frag and the defuse as well. Cloud9 with another round, and this should actually break the economy of CLG, I do believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, they survived three people last yep. round, so they didn't get any money, so... CLG with the... They could force it up, but yep. Cloud9 has a bank now, so it wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so... We have ourselves some pistols here, and this is another one of those rounds where Cloud9... They need to firstly recognize, hopefully they are able to read the money situation properly, so they can say, okay, Guys, they're gonna have uh, eco coming in here. Let's take positions, which are gonna play the range, so, so we can play the ranges effectively. So we can play crossfires, and just just gun them down with the rifles. That is 
what they need to do here, get a clean around him. But Tarek could be causing problems. He already takes down Skadoodle as he jumps down from the boost there. And this is really scary for Sean Gares. He's going to get flanked. They know that he must be there. I can think of they saw they saw Skadoodle dropping off of the off of his head. So they hunt down the second player. Oh my God! Deeks come in, and heads are rolling. Now going in for the retake. Now trying to stop that bomb from getting planted. Spray comes in from nothing, able to. Oh, sorry, from Shroud. Sorry, and it's going to be two kills for him. So looking to try to save this, but it's just Freakazoid left in a one versus three, and Hazed is going to make one more head roll, taking that uh, that next deep frag. Mine is threat. Why would you buy deagles? Hey, fair. Obviously, the outcome speaks for itself because if I'm, very, I'm, I'm a very outcome-oriented person. He would person. have aced immediately if he would have attacked 9. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, I trust you. I trust you. Actually, there's some I important concepts to uh, talk yeah. about regarding this that I just thought of. We can do that after, after, the, after the match. I'm going to write it down, actually. Yeah, I just have to question, like, the tower they use in short yeah. every round, like, they really need to stop doing Oh that. my god, though, we're going to get <laughs> a bit of a... Brutally savaging them, Sean Gares. He has gone full man mode over by A Long, and they're all dead. All of them. Every single last one of them. Even some fire to incinerate the bodies, wipe, wipe their mark clean from the world. But there's a new round, and they will respawn. So, this is Counter Strike after all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just to make sure that everyone knows. Okay, so uh, 3 to 6. Cloud9 looking like they're getting on a bit of a roll. But as you say, we're seeing some uh, riskier plays. Not, it's not like the standard setups, not the standard safe setups. And uh, they're playing the 2-3 now, 2-A, 3-B. Yeah, and as you said, when you were asked if Cloud9 had uh, any idea what kind of economy CLG had, they probably didn't because they went for the tower in short, which is a really poor decision if they knew they were going to go for like a Tech 9 buy. Um, Enter frag here actually for CLG. Yeah, and the, the, bomb, the bomb is rotating back now. I wouldn't be surprised if CLG, CLG just went back towards B as it did last time. They, get, they got an enter frag here. We have a good presence from Cloud9, though, so we'll say. The open angel, that is crazy. Nothing, no fear there. I mean, we're going to have uh, the rest of CLG now starting to be a, bit, be a bit more confident being a man up. They just play the trades correctly here, then they should just be in. Although I say that, Hayes went for the one-on-one -on -one there against Skadoodle. That could have actually gone poorly for, for CLG had he lost that. But uh, indeed, it will be the frag for him as they go for the play into B. Having uh, caused the situation with Cloud9 were incredibly paranoid with the A push. So it will be the round for CLG as Cloud9 try to save these remaining weapons. And uh, let's have a quick, very quick check of their economy. Okay, so there it is. So they'll lose, they'll lose this one and get 1,400 in addition to what they have there. So if they are able to save these two weapons, it's actually incredibly crucial that they save these two rifles right here because that's going to allow them to have somewhat of a proper buy in the following round. If they don't, then they're all going to be around, what is it, like uh, 4K, 4,400, something like that. And yeah. so that's not ideal. If you want the incendiaries and the orbs out there. Cardinal managing to get two frags though, so pressuring their economy a little bit at least. Should go. Yeah, they're gonna buy. Yeah, this is this is good. Now, I, I, and again, like sometimes if if you do like look at the money like in situations like that, and and work out what they'll get afterwards, like you really realize how important how like how round changing the save can be, because otherwise there's no warp here. There's they're, they're gonna be lacking grenades. There's there's lots of there's lots of changes. Oh no. <laughs> Kind of going to stuff. Team flashes, mates. Throwing one into the back of finesse, but CLG looking for the trades into toilets, and this is a very standard opening for T's. I actually like this because this allows them to take connector quickly. They ha they have the ability to trade for positions, trade players for positioning, and that that's really important as T's. Yeah, and their CLG already have complete control of the toilets. So really passive from Cloud9 here, and and CLG not having, not even really using many nades. To yeah, try exactly. To that's the weird, to, yeah. weird part. Because usually you would, because that's that's actually why they've been having problems here, because they're not trying to make the the trade game a little more safe, trying to because these angles can be really brutal, but they're just walking in basically. So Cloud9, uh, it's not going to matter too much for for them. So looks like we're just going to get a straight up A play here, unless they have a fake in mind, but there's nobody towards Suez to hold that, and uh, 
Mine just resting, playing reactively. In come the grenades, slowly but surely. Nice one onto Sean Gares. He's going to go down to 61. Uh, the peaks are going to come in. And you mentioned how this can be a really hard take previously, but it looks like they're able to just walk up into this. There's not that many players here for Cloud9, but they are making the frags nothing with a really nice switch up there. Just one player to another on big angles, and it's going to be just JDM64 who is remaining with the, with the AWP. The time is not with him. Five seconds left. He's going to have to run away. And that was a super weird round, actually. Like you said, we had CLG pushing with no nades. So if Cloud9 were playing in toilets, then they're not making... Th because usually the strength of the CT defense playing aggressively on A is to make it so that... You have many layers. Yeah, you have layers and like T's have to waste... How they have to waste nades to get into the site. And so usually you don't want to throw the nade when you're in a fight. So you have to throw them before. So you don't know yet whether they're going to be there. So it's very strange to see them walking all the way. It's um, a big risk, but it paid yeah, off. Exactly. It, it just wasn't enough. Even th yeah, exactly. Even though they had all the nades to go into the site with it, they couldn't make it work. So that, but nothing. He had a really sick couple kills there. You're getting three kills with one mag with the M4 AS. In that, in yes, on, on the uh, crate when they know all know you're there. Yeah, nothing's been playing pretty well here today. And look at this. There's actually a CT pushed up under the ladder already. Will he? Yes, yeah, actually going up. It's Ooh, this is interesting. Oh, Cutler's going to spot him, though. And that is uh, pretty key there, because had Sean Gares got the kill on the bomb man, and the bomb drops there, well, I mean, he probably wants to fall back still, but that's going to delay CLG a lot. And uh, they're already low on time now. 45 seconds. They've got a man who's playing the Lurk towards Monster. Two players in toilets and one on the long. So they're kind of they're actually quite split up at the moment. They're not really close to making an execute, and nothing's coming in from the back! Oh, and he's going to get the frag onto Finesse. And they have problems now. The time is ticking away. 30 seconds left, and they have to deal with nothing, just demolishing them on the flank. The bomber, meanwhile, has made its way towards Monster as uh, nothing cleans up the toilet area. But he can spot that there's no push coming. So they should have players to stop this plant from happening on B, but they won't just yet. So the bomb at least will go down. And this is actually a winnable situation now for CLG, despite losing two players for free, thanks to uh, nothing. And he's going to make his way around to assist Shroud and Skidule as they make their way in. And they've already got a player on the bomb site, really up close, Freakazoid. He's going to get completely destroyed there by Hayes, but the fire will burn him down for the trade. Cutler coming in now, one on one against nothing, and nothing will take it down. Nothing gets the ace. Well played to him. He has been on fire today, just delivering time and time again for Cloud9. And once more, he's going to save them as he gets his, uh, his 5k in. He, I think he's been top fragging for them, what, every match? Yeah. I think every map, sorry. I think. I'm not 100% sure. But at least on the on Inferno, I think. Yeah, that, that looked like it, like it was going to be an easy round for Cloud9, but uh, Cutler getting that uh, double spray down, a bit lucky. But yeah, ma nothing manage manages to save the round. The interesting thing is that they read the two kills from nothing to be still an A play, but they, they couldn't get the info, so just, that was what allowed the plant. Oh no, we're getting the the trade there, but the dig, I'm telling you man, he's got to kill the deagle. It's good. That one's going in a movie. Okay, so we have a two on four for CLG. If they can get more damage here, that would be really nice. Although, it, I don't know if, I don't know how much money Cloudland actually have right now, but the Famous does tell me that they're quite weak and money. Yeah, so extra damage here could be really effective. If they find two extra kills, that would be really strong. So far, though, they're not finding all that much. Just Cloud9 is sitting on the bomb. Yeah, they, they should just play the safe. Cloud9 knows they don't want to give away any weapons at this point. Uh -oh. I like this. Oh my goodness. No one was waiting for that. Oh my god, he almost got a second kill there as, as well. Onto Sean Gares. He was very weak, but Skidoo will finish off haste. But two frags is definitely a very acceptable result there. So four to nine is the score as Cloud9 pick up more CT rounds. And it was really interesting because Cloud9 was struggling um, in various rounds. And I and it feels like we're seeing very different rounds all the time. We're not like we're not seeing a consistency to some of their setups. So they're mixing up their players quite a lot in how they're playing in different spots and, and where they are actually going, how many how many players they have towards B or towards A. And like this round as well, we're seeing a connector push, not super common here from Cloud9. But this round we're gonna see it. Nothing in Sean Gares. And 
they will get a nice crossfire, but not needed as nothing goes back up the stairs to eliminate Finesse. And this is why that aggressive CT play can be very dangerous indeed for the T's. Looking to, oh my goodness, definitely uh, going to regret that one. JDN64 picking up a lovely frag, and that's going to make life a little bit easier as uh, Skidoo was kind of holding down the toilets, but now the, there's a free path to the bomb site, which is going to allow a quick plant for, for CLG. This is uh, turning into quite the, a poor situation for Cloud9, unless they can get a fast frag, but that smoke is uh, perfect for Haze to just spot through the bottom. Gets a free kill onto a so he Cutler locking down connector as well and Cloud9 now down to two players in a round that looked like they had a huge advantage CLG have managed to save it all beginning with that frag onto Skadoodle but can they close he's gonna go for the peak takes down Shroud and Sean Gares just cannot get in he cannot get a single look into the bomb site and Hayes goes in for the final frag very well done indeed and uh, wow that again Cloud9 had that yeah yeah the, the thing is if you have the two guys on A go aggressive connector you can get completely cut off from the A site. Yep. And that's what's happened there because you can't go up the stairs because the, the terrorist waiting in party will have like the easiest time ever to kill you from that angle. Which means you have to rotate at the, <coughs> the entire way back. And also the other two guys, they're defending B, so they're not like sure if they can rotate yet. So CLG just understanding that situation. So you're really basically well. saying like Skidoo has to be much further back basically. Like he, to for yeah. that to... to to mitigate that that's position, but damage from that. So, or that you take someone from B to go against a connector. Right. Take serious and go in, but we do have a pretty brutal, uh, pretty brutal round here to finish off the half. COG just completely abusing a lack of economy for Cloud9 in that round, and they will take it six to nine. So, I think COG are going to be really happy with this. Yeah, that was a really good half, especially considering that they lost the pistol round. So six rounds as T on overpass, losing the pistol round. It's uh, yeah, really, really good half. Yeah. Um, so how do you how do you again? So you introduced yourself. I was I was very busy, you know, tweeting and stuff. So you mentioned obviously that you've been playing Vaser recently. Okay. So you've been doing in-game leading at the at the top level more or less. Or I guess Ace would be a tier two team. I guess that's fair to say, like yeah. not, not in the top eight in Europe. So like a tier two team. Yeah, yeah fair. that's fair. Yeah. That's fair, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. You, you really don't want to like insult me. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so so you have a lot of experience playing against a lot of teams here when it comes to overpass, because you know, it's, it's a very commonly played map in, in, uh, in Europe. So from your experiences there, and, and looking at how normal CT rounds go, what, like, what, what are your expectations when you're going into just the A dynamic? Because the, the, that's, that has the most flexibility. And it felt like we saw lots of different setups from, from Cloud9. Some were like really cool. Um, but do you think that they were mixing up too much? What would you like to have seen? Yeah, it's, we didn't see a lot of that. Like you have three people and you like go very aggressive, but you still, you still want to go aggressive, but you want the option to always fall back. Yeah. Because as you say, like if you get flash, just fall back because they have wasted a flash, and then like you fall back because they wasted their nades. Exactly what you mm. said. It's uh, or you do the like only two people there, and then you usually go for the tower on forest. I don't know what the tower yeah, on yeah, short yeah. when yeah. you can see through the toilets. So, yes, yeah, so there's like the the glass that they were exactly. looking, looking yeah, through exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. They got which caught there a few times. A, a position which is obviously getting too obvious. Because it's people it's are yeah. just like pre-firing it now. As w I think we've seen like three rounds lost this today only, just due to players just standing there and people just expect y yeah. expecting it. We even had we even had a spot actually where uh, someone died from that position, and the guy who was there didn't immediately just fall back behind the smoke behind the smoke that was down, when he kind of could have and just like you know thrown a flash down to try to get out of there because obviously if th you kill someone there you know he didn't he couldn't he can't levitate. There's another yeah. guy there, right? <laughs> There's another guy there. So that's one of those spots where you saw a couple extra players lost. And that's the thing, like you lose two players there because you get pinned down. If you, you have to immediately react. So we saw that a couple of times uh, coming into play. Um, it was very interesting, actually. Uh, one of the things that I really like about Vatus Pro when they play is because they, they get super aggressive on the A side of the map, which is really in just interesting to watch. Not many teams, I don't think there's a team that I've seen that can pull it off as well as they can. And it's, it fits their style because they really like this kind of a style. But it's cool because cool they, they go forward, they'll take a kill, and then just, or just run back to the site and be like, okay, we have another, a small advantage now. 
and we're just going to sit back on the site. So guys, we do have a small small delay. It's so waiting on the teams at the moment to uh, get themselves ready for the second half. So we should be live again momentarily. Again, this is the HTC Reborn Invitational. It's map number three for just joining us. And uh, this is the last map. The winner will go up against Liquid in the grand final. And of course, uh, will also be guaranteed at least $2,500, as 5K will go to the first place. And third and fourth are, is uh, $1,250 as well for the people that are coming third and fourth. So you know, Affinity managed to be the, the first team to, uh, to actually claim that. So I think that they did a really good result, considering I think people didn't expect them to do so well. Um, but yeah, so we're turning back to, back to Overpass now, because we're, we're moving into what will be the T half for Cloud9 and CT half uh, for their opponents. So again, expectations from what you've seen so far in this series? I think CLG has a like slight advantage right now. If they win a pistol, it's gonna become a huge adva advantage, but uh, like, sure, it, six rounds losing the pistol is a really good result, but you can easily just always fall into that eco trap when your CT or like your economy is in just a complete disaster. Mm. and. Uh, if CLG like manages to like not get into that position, I think they will win. So save the weapons, like make decisions like that. Don't co go for the three v four retake, or maybe not even the three v three retake. Sometimes just mm. try to not get money screwed. Actually, the the thing for me that throws this into favor when it comes to CLG, because I feel like CLG on the CT side are actually be favored here, is actually what I saw from them on Inferno because. Uh, CLG's Inferno, like, let's, if we look at the, like, the first, because they went 11-1 or something, right, on Inferno, yeah. uh, which is a really amazing CT half from them. Um, they were so consistent with their setups. They had like a default setup that, that was flexible, and they could add a play here or there, but the, 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 the base of it was quite, quite solid. And I feel like this map is quite similar. Like if you just if you just treat you know the, the A side where you can push and stuff, just like think of that as like banana from Inferno, and the uh, B side is just a static defense, I feel like... CLG can bring that same consistency they had in Inferno. I feel like they are favored, but we do have to go through the pistol round. And wow, we're straight into the action here as we jump in. We're on a, on a B execute from Cloud9, and they are going to take themselves a quick bomb plant. So CLG now to save this and start with a good economy are going to need quite a significant retake. And we've got someone who is just not a very welcoming neighbor. <laughs> I, I don't know it's, whether... It's so silly that you can do that. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether, you know... I don't know whether... Cutler's like the worst salesman ever. He just keeps shutting the door and like, no, I do not want your, your washing machines that you're selling. Please leave me alone. I don't want your deagle. I mean, are you guys, what, deagles? Deagles. Does he have a deagle? Oh no, one has a deagle. no one even has a deagle. What are you talking about? I'm confused. You've thrown me. Threat. Th thanks for that. So Cloud9, they're going to pick up the pistol. This it makes it pretty ridiculously bad for CLG. They need to they need to come out with a lot of damage here. And yeah, we see a deal now on haste. Not even opting to buy an armor. I guess it's going to leave him with roughly like $800, uh, assuming he didn't get any frags, which would mean that he can try to be able to afford an AWP. And he's looking for the Deagle Sniper. <laughs> oh my god, that is ridiculous. That just is so ridiculous. This is happening only because I like talked shit yeah. about the Deagle. Yeah, pretty much. The Deagle <laughs> is very inconsistent. It is very inconsistent. It is not, it's not 100% uh, accurate at that range. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So that's, that's why people refer to it as, as this weapon that you yeah. can't rely on it, basically. But you can gamble with it. And that's what Hayes did. Picked up a quick kill. Looking for a close range on a second shot. That would have really crippled the push from Cloud9. But they picked up the kill on him in, instead. And they're going to push into that bomb site. And but so far, so good. They are just gutting the bomb site completely of CT players. And they'll take the round. So despite the... The flashy first frag on the defense from Hayes at the max range with Deagle. It's going to be a clean round for Cloud9. Yeah, I, I can see like a point buying it a CT. Like it kind of makes sense because you can hold the angles like that. You can, yeah, you, yeah, it can actually work. You yeah. can take a shot and then fall back to another angle. Yeah. Take a shot, fall back to another angle. But as T, when it's like more expensive than the Tech 9, it yep. doesn't really make any sense. Okay, well we are going to have a on the anti-eco here. Just passive play, Cloud9 using the ranges. 
and trying to abuse the LG. So it should be a pretty easy 12-6 for them. And I really do want to see CLG's CT side. I want, I want to see what the default is for them. I'm very much uh, looking forward to that. So we'll see that after this round. But I hope they get more than one chance to play with it. Because this is, this is the uh, situation that you run into, isn't it? Where you might not get a chance to really play your CT side. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you, let's say Cloud9 win the next round, you know, like one we, or lose the next round, you know, one we won. And then they win the fifth round. Forcing CLG to like two more ecos. Yeah, to, to, to double eco, right? Yeah, and then it's like 15 rounds of Cloud9 and yeah, CLG. Yeah, and, and then they'll probably not even double eco, they'll probably like save one and then get like a really, really poor fight. So they have more chances. So you, yeah, you just never get to see it. Yeah, exactly. And that's the situation I talked about earlier when you get into that like disastrous economy. So hopefully they can avoid that for their sake. Now here comes the buy from CLG and. I'm curious what they have to show with it. JDM64, of course, picking up the AWP. He is a really good AWP. When JDM64 is hot, it is pretty impressive, to say the least, to watch him work the AWP. AWP. All right, so what setup do we see? We've got two players on long, A long here for CLG. They have nobody in toilets, actually, unless there is a boost. Of so okay, I think there's yeah, a boost in B, so there's two, three setup. And uh, just checking, they're checking to see if there's anyone who is. But oh, that is a sick frag there from Shroud. He's going to take down this Orpa immediately for CLG. Tarek gets the very needed trade, but he's going to have to get another one. But it's not going to happen. Cloud9 getting those two kills immediately. And this is the problem, the problematic situation um, for CLG. Because now, at least they get the rotation well in advance. But they're still down some men. Cutler gets one, but they can't just be going for one for one. They're, they are outmanned at the moment. Sean Gare's going over the top into Optimus. Finesse. Finally making a positive fragging situation for his team. Bomb will go down though. Freakazoid looking for something through the smoke in the back. And he's got himself a good position. And he's going to find the side of Finesse. And now it's down to Haste. Freakazoid is very low, but he's got a nothing to go through. And nothing is waiting in those toilets. Ready to pounce. That's quite a sinister statement. i got to say... Don't quote me on that. That's weird. So Haze will save his gun. And, uh, oh wow. Because I'm actually not going to make it out in time. Um, yeah, I'm 13 rounds now for Cloud9. And CLG, will they force buy? Like, if the eco, they give Cloud9 14 yeah. rounds. It's like, there's um, you can't make any good decisions yep. at this point. Like, all decisions is like terrible. Yeah, exactly. It's, you're, you're choosing between bad and bad basically yeah. and or low percentage plays and low percentage there's no there's no like solid percentage plays here and the thing as well for CLG is that uh, that round that they had previous with their buy they kind of went they, they played two players with rifles very close to an engagement where they can't fall back so they played they went for a, a pretty hefty gamble at the start so we didn't see what I would call a normal setup where maybe the opera would be much further back and they have two players in toilets. So the AWPA can actually duck into toilets if things go bad, get support from the riflers, w whether it be flashes or whatever, and they can play team play setups and fall back together if they need to. So they opened it up with a gamble, and it didn't pay off for them, and uh, Cloud9 got the better of the trades. And now they are in this position. This is what they have to deal with. Haste on the save, and his teammates, uh, well, save of the M4, the rest of his teammates investing a small amount to have something to work with. Cloud9 very aware of this eco, and they are going to be going for the safe place. Sean Guest sprays down to in connector. Cloud9 looking very good at the moment, but JDM64, oh, double snap from him with the P250. Going to pick up the AK. In comes Sean Gares as he tries to discover exactly what's going on over by the toilets area, and JDM64 has fallen back now. He's, he's managed to save that AK, and they could even win this round if JDM goes huge with some more shots from this AK. In go the grenades. He's going to have to peek now that fire is down. Oh, and he's going to get tagged down by Sean Gares for his triple, and just Cutler, who's left over. But two frags is acceptable. It'd be nice if Cutler could try to find something extra here for his team, for CLG, because they need to be able to force Ecos out. They just have to. Yeah, and 14 rounds now for Cloud9. I think, like, at this point, sure, the economy will matter, but, like, it's just about rounds now. It's just so hard to, like, win this many rounds in a row now for 
CLG. All right, so let's see if they go for the t three man that one way. Eh? Yeah, I mean the the, the the two rifles, or even a rifle or or even three towards party at the start of the round, then sending the Orpa to through the connector into the A long area from toilets, that, like stuff like I guess that basic stuff that would be cool. And they are going to go for the three man. Are they going to push down connector? Looks like they might do that actually with two players. Now again, we had that situation before where. I think it was Skadoodle who got caught out and tagged down from Poilus and they lost control of A completely with the two players in connector. CLG must avoid this situation. Just get the answer frag there in connector. We have three players on party for Cloud9. As JDN64 looks for anyone to challenge his angle, he misses the shot and Skadoodle takes him out. However, they do have two players on the bomb site, so this is a better ha handle of this kind of an opening from CLG so far. And it's going to be loads of smokes. They're almost a running execute onto the A site from, from Cloud9. They want to get the bomb down straight away. And Tarek is going to be found by Shroud. Cutler still holding down Optimus Prime, though, with that M4 of his. And Hayes with an A straight on over. Don't find anything just yet, and the bomb ca is not planted. Skadule has actually got hold of the bomb. The Orpa's on the bomb, which is not an ideal situation. Going to have to find some shots here. Takes down Cutler. In comes Finesse, close range. And he's going to take down Skadule, who had the bomb in hand. And nothing will get eliminated as well. And I thought Cloud9 were going to get the bomb down like straight away. But I think because Skadule had it on long, and that, that simple mistake meant that, that they couldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. And, and then fall back off, off of it. Yeah, that's true. And uh, if CLG would lose this round now, they're basically going to lose this semi-final because only two people surviving. They have to buy everything they can with all the money they have. So Cloud9 has a great opportunity here to win this semi-final now. Okay, we're seeing the two men down a long play from CLG, something that has punished them previously. Because you have to, if you get challenged here, you are pretty, you can be pretty committed. If uh, Cloud9 go for an early challenge with two players, but Tarek goes for a peek pretty early there, and it's actually going to be uh, punished by Cloud9, a patient Cloud9. So they played, they outplayed CLG in that spot with their patience. And. Uh Great decision here by Cloud9, doing as CLG did when they got the Enterfrag, just falling back towards B. Probably gonna go out, monster. Great shot, and that angle again, JDM64, gonna abuse it. And uh, throw down the smoke to escape, but they might be trying to spray. Oh, one get oh, it's three because he's stuck in front of the smoke. They're gonna keep executing in here, Cloud9. Not a good look for them, Shroud. Looking to uh, get a result here, but he's gonna have to go for a reload. The nades are coming in, the bomb is down in the flames, and he's just scanning for these players. Spots the first one, Hayes will go down, but Shroud can't do much more than that. And uh, I feel like Shroud is one of those players, if you get him in a position to like frag people, that's then you're in a really good spot. Because we're finding lots of, like that spot, for example, he's got players like on too many angles, nades all over the place, he can't really get clean, a clean fragging situation. But sometimes we just see him just explode into a bomb site and just take everyone down. If he just gets that right angle, the right uh, right one on ones, you can see him just go absolutely nuts. But that's just too too much to ask for. It seems. Last play into the B bomb site now. Cloud nine. Actually deciding to go for the like force buy with one galil and tech nine. So he push all in the line up here for Hayes. Take down one before the trade comes in. Three on three now. Cloud9 looking not too bad actually, but getting off of the bomb site after planting is pretty difficult. And Skadoodle's going to make the frag on to Tarek, but indeed Shroud will get eliminated after the bomb plant. Sean Gares has to save the day as he goes in, but the smoke is down. And oh, he's going to be spotted. Oh wow, what a shot there. Through the smoke onto JDM by the water. Sean Gares now one on one. And that's a, a significantly diff a different situation. And it's exactly what you said before. If you put the smoke down, you think it's going to be helping you, but it, it didn't help them at all there. No. Actually made it incredibly impossible for them. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's good in like a three V three, like an like when it's uh, even with the players, but as as long as uh, you have an advantageous position you shouldn't smoke that position. Because if you just smoke it or if you don't smoke it you can just fake the fuse and just hold them. They definitely have the time to do that. 
Cloud9 15 to 8 now. They are one round away from moving forwards here. And only Hipple from CLG. This is going to be pretty tough. And they're going to be moving into that bombsite on Cloud9. Oh, we get Hayes. He's going to kill the bomber. That bomb is down on the ground and it's a three on three. Now these pistols are delivering these five sevens. In comes JDM64. Oh, the nade. Oh, it was perfect. He's going to take down Skadoodle. Nothing down onto two HP. And COG might be saving themselves in this. They're three on one now. Just with Measy five sevens against the intimidating rifle setup of Cloud9. Apparently not so intimidating after all as we are going to see. Sean Gares wrapping around the monster, and there's the spray down. Tarek picks up the kill, and they survive. Nine rounds to 15, but they are playing for that overtime. Great shots there from Haste. Just playing out of his mind right now. That position is not easy with the 5-7 versus 8Ks. Yeah, I can't imagine it being all that consistent to win a round like that, so... They are now going to be rewarded with the ability to play with uh, with rifles, and I think a bit of a miss by there, so a bit of money wasted maybe by CLG. I think it found us on the floor. Probably going to go for a fast play, it would look like, right now. Made over there, a little bit uh, too deep though. So good set up here from CLG. Waiting to spot a player. From Cloud9, who are they're trying to get a little bit of intel. I think they will hear them jumping around though. I mean they must haze is right there behind the wooden board, so they definitely hear the jumping. They're maybe trying to bait out the jumping of their own, but maybe uh boost to spot the info. Nothing much here so far for Cloud9 and CLG they won't move. They do not have to. Now Cloud9 with no entry into B, they're going to try their luck with A. They don't have any grenades. They don't have any weapons. They don't have any armor. And now they're all dead. That was a great <laughs> round. Yeah, I like the decision that Cloud9 like all, almost didn't buy anything because it, CLG will obviously have money and buy every round because Cloud9 will win if they win a single round now. So yeah, going for the double eco as well. I would have almost wanted Cloud9 to not buy anything at all this round. Because there's no point in going for e economic damage when you have 15 rounds. Mm. And, uh, well, they have a couple 3 tech 9s actually. I mean, if they get close to a CT, you honestly just don't know what can happen here. And JDM64 can be content to make that frag, make the call for his teammates. Cannot, <laughs> cannot challenge in against these uh, T's who are close with 2 tech 9s. It's very risky. Gonna wait. Smart stuff, and the nades will do their damage. And that's the problem, these Tech 9s. Really, really powerful. Because he picks up a kill, but it's uh, long ranges here that are favorable for CLG, and we'll see that to use to great effect. Rifles coming in for Shroud, or a rifle coming in for Shroud. But no armor. He needs the instant kills. There's one. But Tarek has one straight back at him as well. Yeah, and Cloud9 should have a lot of money now. Also getting that extra uh, loss uh, round loss bonus now, so should be able to close this match out now. Maybe not this round, but in the next four rounds. And they have uh, only two models though, so might not be a B execute. Yeah, bomb going towards party. They have the uh, smoke in there to deny the angles here, so they can so the T's can get into party area, but JDM64 will, re will reposition, and uh, you already know your angles. The angles are really crazy, like, specific on the toilet area and party. Sometimes we see, you have, to, you have to know them very crucially, because otherwise the AWPers or the riflers can just find, find. Uh, th there's, I don't know, do you know what I'm tra talking about here? Yeah, yeah. You have to, like, move perfectly, otherwise you'll get caught. We actually saw Skadoodle getting caught on the CT side, because he was a bit further out than he should have been. I explained that so badly, I don't think anyone but you understands what I mean. <laughs> it's basically like, if I stand here, can he see me from that position? Yeah, there's or like not? so many of those angles, yeah. yeah, and it's very hard to be safe sometimes. Um, so, Cloud9 will take over toilets. Slowly but surely. Tarek going down to 9 The uh, advantage now for CLG on the defense. 
double orb is proving very effective. JDM64 going to pick up the frag towards toilets. The bomb is down for Cloud9. Is this actually happening right now? Because it looks like uh, CLG have found strength in their default setup. And that's that's what we were thinking about previously. What I really want to see. And the double orbs is really good on this map, actually. Really, really good. If you have... I think um, I liked the way that Envious used to play it quite some time ago. Skidoo gets challenged. I'll just see if he can pick up some extra kills here. Excellent stuff there from Skidoo. Draw Skidoo takes down number three. Almost the fourth as well. Um, that's actually kind of kind of problematic if COG can't actually get the uh, the buys in properly after sustaining a lot of damage. You can see their money is actually really low. So they want to survive with a lot of players here, actually, to be honest, so that they always can keep a good setup. And Cloud9 actually deciding to go for that, like, half force buy. I think it's mostly due to schedule having that AWP. So you're looking to take over tw uh, Suez very quickly, almost like a knife round there. Everyone just got running to the Suez. But we do have the push coming from Cloud9, so they have all the bodies in place, more or less. Trey's coming in, Cloud9 looking not too shabby indeed, as the bomb can't go down just yet. They need to still find safety by getting the kills and locking down some of these angles with smokes. JDM64 leering in, or peering in over the top there. Great vantage point, but won't connect the shot. Shroud gets to keep his head in this round so far. But JDM64 will find him in the end. Guess with the bomb is just running, thunderfooting all over the place. Now, he's got a minute to play with. For the frags, Finesse finds him. And another round there for CLG. I think they're going to do this. I think they're actually making this happen right now, this comeback. Yeah, Cloud9 has to eco. How or many rounds like in a row? They, they're going to buy so they can buy next round, so they're probably going to buy like Tech9, Light, Kevlar, Smoke. How many rounds in a row has this been? Okay, they've got five, five in a row. That's. That's been pretty strong here. So, of course, it is overpass, so you kind of expect it as, uh, for the CT side, but still. But Shroud has a Deagle now, so, of course, Shroud, come on, we win now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, man, don't joke around. <laughs> yeah. We've got the long-range Tech-9 frag onto Cutler. Trace coming in, though, and actually, Cloud-9, they've made a huge push onto this B bomb site. Absolute catastrophe has struck CLG as JDM64 goes in from jungle, waits for his teammate to get a better vantage point as well. Tarek in there, nade over the top. It should be pretty strong. They don't have a lot of, uh, only uh, Sean Gares as Kevlar. So, oh, he's gonna get burned down. Oh, that is massive right there. Here's the guy with the rifle as well. CLG looking pretty good into this one now, but in comes the Deagle, as uh, they both are over by Monster. There is the first player, nothing's going to push forward. Oh, Shroud almost getting burned down. And hey, man, round one by the Deagle, <laughs> match one by the Deagle. I think the universe is trying to tell you something, Threat. But congratulations to Cloud9. They're going to go into the Grand Finals against Team Liquid. I guess, I guess the two biggest organizations um, in, in North American Counter-Strike at the moment. And uh, Wow, we have a, a thrilling best of three grand finals on our hands. And uh, $1,250 will be awarded to CLG for making it so far and to Affinity as well. So congratulations to them for getting a deep run. But it's all about, it's all about uh, Team Liquid. It's all about Cloud9 into this grand final. I can't wait to see what happens. Any final thoughts on that one? No, just s sick almost comeback there from uh, CLG. Only like two rounds away, and then losing that eco. It's like, mm. yeah, it's uh, it's rough. It's definitely all quite thanks rough. to the deagle. Oh, of course, the deagle, the holy deagle. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break whilst we go into well setting up the grand final for the HCC Reborn Invitational. So, hope you've enjoyed the Counter Strike action thus far. One more best of three will conclude the tournament. And again, thanks to HTC for, for supporting Counter-Strike and coming into the scene. This is their first Counter-Strike tournament, so we will see who will be awarded the, uh, the trophy and the $5,000 for first prize into the, in the next best of three. So stay with us.